terse words at a mobile phone shop. But then the mood has been a bit prickly since the Jordanian government announced last month that it would increase its special tax on mobile phones. So what was its message? Well, first, a doubling of tax on all handsets from 8 to 16 percent. And the one that's got everyone talking, the doubling of tax on both pre- and post-paid subscriptions from 12 to 24 percent. The decision drew immediate uproar from the three biggest service providers. They warned the hike could irreparably damage the telecoms industry by causing users to reduce spending, leading to lost revenues and jobs. Zane is one of those big three, and its CEO is not happy. The government declared that they are going to make 100 million out of this decision. And our argument, you no, know, uh, this is not true, and there will, be, there will be no 100 million generated out of this decision. It will only reduce the revenues of the sector. Uh, it will disturb the consumer behavior and the sector. And at the end of the day, the income, the net revenue that the government will generate out of this decision, it's going to be immaterial, if not negative. So why the tax? Well, the government's been suffering from a huge budget deficit, estimated to be more than $600 million. And it's looking at all options to shore up its large interest payments. So to defend the government's position, they put forward Mohammed Al Thani, the CEO of the Telecommunication Regulatory Commission. Their mission statement, high quality telecoms available to all at an affordable price. But won't the move deter people from spending, as Zane's CEO suggests? Customers will still continue to own and use cell phones. We believe that the impact of the decision will be marginal. And we also believe that this marginal effect will be absorbed by the nice and healthy profit margins that our operators are making and we do want them to continue making these healthy profit, profits. The mobile phone tax hike comes at a time when Jordanians are already feeling the pinch thanks to rising fuel prices. So what are they making of the latest levy on the cost of living? It's become a real problem for those of us who buy data packages for our phones. With the internet, it won't be enough to recharge your line once. You'll have to do that three or four times a month. So you'll end up paying an extra 50 or $60 just for recharge cards. They're really expensive for us, and we can't handle them. I'm thinking to cancel all calls. I don't need them anymore, and if anyone would like to speak to me, they can call me. Other than that... I'm not going to pay from my own pocket to call someone. It's just too much. Everything in, the, in Jordan is increasing, and, and, and the rate in the salaries of the people is not, uh, are not increasing. So they're getting higher, and the salaries are keeping the same, so it's not working. So has the government got the balance right? Well, Telecom's analyst Jawad Abbasi says there's precedent to suggest revenues will suffer. In the last uh, rate hike on cellular services, where the special tax was increased, from 8% to 12%, uh, there was a measurable uh, uh, dampening of demand tied to the, to the rate hike. So it's, it's a profitable uh, for the three existing operators, cell operators are profitable, but they're not outrageously profitable. Uh, for example, if you look at the internal rate of return for France Telecom uh, over its 13 years in Jordan, it's around 9%, 9.5% in Jordanian dinars, and in euros it's around 8%. It's, it's a fair return on investment, but it's nothing outrageous that, uh, that it would uh, be a basis for increasing the taxation level on them. But while the mobile phone tax is widely disliked, it may prove to be just the tip of the iceberg of the government's fiscal tightening. Next, there's plans to increase electricity prices for big business, with households due to see a rise next year. So it seems the crunch of austerity will be felt in Jordan for some time yet.